awesome viewers, welcome to AC Studio. In this video, we're gonna look at the latest Joy Toy Terminator Chaplain Brother Veneers in Terminator Armor. I have just got it now, and I've already looked at some of the videos uh, on the review of this figure on YouTube. Seems likely that there is some issues with the design. So let's explore what the issues are and I'll tell you my thoughts behind these issues. Let's open it. So let's have a look. Nothing really special about the packaging, but it feels relatively heavy though. So all the figures in Terminator armor are usually quite heavy, just like the Great Knight. So, all right. All right, what's this? Oh, actually to give you a uh, clear base. It is very small, but it looks very nice. I really like clear base, so if you put it on a uh, diorama base, right, you will see through that, right? It's, it is not that obvious compared to a solid color base, so that's good. Before we reveal the figure, let's have a look at the accessories. So the first thing we look at is the Crocius Achaelum. So this is like a melee weapon, uh, like an axe or a hammer. Uh, that usually used by a chaplain. So let's have a look at the details. You see, look at the skull details, looks really, really great. And they have the weathering on it as well. But you can see the mole line on the edge. And the back of it looks really nice as well. You know? Yeah, and then you got these etching or patterns or recess patterns on the handle. And then you got this little nice detail at the end of it as well. So everything looks really nice. This feel really heavy so overall i think this weapon looks really nice together so it matches the um chaplain really well look at the skulls as well <laughs> and then we got a uh, what do you call it? a bolter is it um the bolter nothing really special the colors is okay silver looks lighter compared to the previous figures that i got for example the tap marine you know if you look at the bolter the colors is actually darker, right? It comes with a bit of wash, but this one got less wash. But you can see a little bit here as well. They try to do that as well. That doesn't look too bad. And again, look at the motor line or the seam line. It looks very obvious, but otherwise looks really good. Looks really interesting, actually. It'll be great though, if you're able to pull that apart, but unfortunately you cannot, so that's all right. And they got exchangeable hands. And I noticed that the exchangeable hand, they are kind of okay. They are not, they're still hard plastic, but you can still pull, pull it, right? You have three sets of hands on um, both opposite side or opposite directions. So, which is really good. So you can you know, exchange weapons if you like. This hand is quite stiff as compared to the one that holding the gun. So it's a little bit tricky to put that hammer into it, into the hand. This is actually very hard. I cannot even pull it out at all. Ugh. My God, this is really, really stiff. Two very boring minutes later. I managed to put that in, so it is okay. And the gun is actually quite easy to put in as well. And the weapons looks really well together with the figure. And now let's look at the details in the next 30 seconds. And I'll come back to you and tell you what I think. knew that the details on the chaplain through the early release photos by Joy Toy you know three months ago we already knew that the details on this chaplain will be amazing now I got this in hand and I realized the figure looks even better than the photos you know the words the lettering or the words on the script are recessed so it's not just painting so that looks really really nice and also they put a wash on it so it looks really really good 
the rendering on the skull is beautiful. That looks really, really good. And surprisingly, what Jordan did is they put this whole thing on a ball joint. So you can see it is on a ball joint. And um, so that is a big improvement compared to the Nikon Lord. Remember on my video on my Nikon Lord, right? If you watch it, right? This thing just fell off and there's no flexibility as well. So when you move the figure, sometimes you just move this part as well. And it forced this to be break off from the figure. So what they did here is very good. So I'm very appreciate what they have done on this figure. So I'll let put this put it back. So this thing is all the ball joint as well. Yep. So that's pretty good. So what happened is when you play with the figure, when you move the figure, right? It doesn't break off easily and it gives you a bit of flexibility to move around as well. So that's pretty good. And look at the details on the on the torso. That looks really, really nice. And this is soft plastic as well. And also the skull these two are on a ball joint. So that looks really good as well. So you can move it around. So it doesn't really affect the movement of the uh, legs as well. Yeah, and that's on soft plastic as well. Even though the lens around the head are in dark blue color, but they still put you know reflective um, gloss surface on it. So that looks really really good. And um, look at the shoulder pad. Look at that. That's absolutely amazing. Look at the details they've done. Right. This is probably the best sculpt I've ever seen on any jaw toy figures. So that looks really nice as well. And look at the other side as well. Wow, look at that, that's amazing. So they look different. So, wow, I'll, that looks absolutely amazing. And what I really like is this design. It looks really, really cool. Kind of like Gothic style as well. So I really love this Chaplin, right? And this Gothic style exhaust as well. So, and at the back, the scope of this is okay. It looks a little bit too symmetrical, but I like it, you know, yeah, and, and I would love this rope here as well. These details are beautiful, are very, very nice. And this is soft plastic sculpt that's swimming. I really love the details on the head sculpt. I think it looks really, really nice. Um, they've done really well on the weathering. I think the weathering is just right. And it seems like the color of the skull looks really, really good as well. You know, it's not too white or too brown. So everything is right there right it's just perfect the legs as well the details on the legs are really nice this is kind of like gothic style design as well so the race details are silver painted at the back and this is gold at the front under the light the shininess is really really good it's just perfect right it's not too shiny and it's not too dull you know and not too matte as well the details on the cape so one side is kind of like cream or white color and with details on the edges as well look at the scalp as well they should put a little bit more kind of like shadowing on the cape to make it looks better you know the previous figure that i revealed is on the tall garadon from imperial fist the weathering on the cape of that figure looks better than this so i wish they can make the shadow a little bit darker so it looks better but that looks okay too so so in general so in general the details looks really really amazing on the figure and now let's have a look at the articulation so first thing we look at is the head articulation the head is surrounded by this armor right so it's the head is surrounded by this armor so there's no way you can actually turn it turn the head right you can able to do it but it's not easy so what i suggest is maybe use a bit of cardboard to push it around right so don't use anything which is hard you know like for example like metal um, or even plastic you know um, to push it or you know anything like that so best is to use like i use a cardboard so it won't scratch the um you know, paint off from the head so that's something that i always do and you can move up looking up really good really high then look down as well you see looking look down really well as well so really nice and next is where the issues are and i've already watched some of the reviews by other youtubers you know on the issue of the shoulder pad initially i don't really believe it so when i open the box right i kind of like play around with the shoulder i kind of pull it out and push it push it out whatever i can you know i don't really believe joto is so stupid right to make that a static shoulder so what happened is i tested it out so based on other reviews the shoulder pad cannot move at all so they actually stick the shoulder pad onto the body armor so they what they did is they have this little kind of like horizontal extension right shoulder pad attached to that horizontal extension 
so it doesn't really do anything. So I'll show me to show you. This is the horizontal extension in the shoulder pad. You see that little thing, the horizontal thing in there, right? So you cannot really able to do much um, to the shoulder pad. So I kind of like, you can slightly move up and down, but it cannot move together with the hand together. So you can see it cannot move up. So what I did, I tried to push the hand up to absolute limit. I can see the horizontal you know, extension slightly twisted up. So this is the absolute max you can do, right? So you move to the back, it doesn't even move to the back. So if you move the back, you see it doesn't even move much. That's the maximum angle you can move. And then you move that way. Ugh, I try to push it up as much as I can. I'm taking the risk of breaking it up, but I need to take risks. I'm, you know, I'm doing reveal to show you guys. So that is the best I can do, you see? Absolute max. And same as that one as well. I cannot move up really high. So you see, that's the absolute max I can do. And, oh um, my. I just don't understand why Joy Toy changed the design and this is such a stupid design. Why not follow what you have done on the on the Terminators for example. You know look, shoulder pad is stuck on the arm. So you can move it up like that and down. So I could make really nice posts like this, you know. And look at the Terminator, it's just stupid. You see, if I try to put it, and that's all I can do. Compared to that. Oh my god, what the hell is going on with Joy Toy? You know what I mean? He spent all these years developing the figure really well, right? You got a really nice figure and you ruined it by this stupid shoulder pad design. We're paying a lot of money on this figure and this is what we gave us. I can't even move out a little bit at all. But if you design it this way, right? At least you can still got the space to play with. You see, I can still twist a little bit out, right? But this one is just useless. I can't do anything to it, you know? Got all this like, articulation. How, I mean, what's the point having it now? You know, I can't even move it up. I also see a bit of white powder at the very edge. And usually that's created by super glue. So what they did is they probably super glue this shoulder pad onto the horizontal extension. So that means there's virtually no articulation on that. So, oh, I just don't understand why they did this way. Because this is quite expensive figure, right? So, I mean, just what's the point, right? Anyway, look at the rest of the articulation. Yes, you have a mid torso ball joint, you have 360 waist joint. And as I said, again, they got a ball joint on this thing here. So you can move it around. And um, and then the hip movement, this side armor here, it got really good movement. You see, they put efforts in doing that. They're not putting efforts in doing that. Don't understand the logic. And it can kick up, okay, it can kick up high. And then you got a um, double knee joint. You can only barely do 90 degrees. Okay, and the ankle, it can twist down a, quite a bit, which is really, really good. And it can it tilt up a bit as well. Uh, this is the max you can do. So that concludes the articulation. So you can see the shoulder pad is ridiculous in design. Now have a look at the size comparison. So compared to the um, figures in similar size. So you can see the uh, right is Marinus Kelga and then the Tatmarine. And on the left is Great Knight and the uh, Chaos Terminator. So you can see here one by one. So that is the size differences here, right? So these three figures have terminated armor and then you can see the size comparison. So so the Chaos Terminator is similar size to the Chaplain. They are almost the same height. And then you got the Great Knight Terminator that is a little bit taller, you know, when compared to head height. But I do notice the Terminator Chaplain actually has a uh, lowered shoulder pad compared to the Chaos Terminator and then the Great Knight Terminator. So I don't know whether is that because of the height of the figure is a little bit shorter or because of the stupid shoulder pad design. So you see the height differences here? Not too sure why, it looks actually shorter, right? When I look at it in general, right, overall, it looks like this figure is smaller than the other two. But the head is the same height as the Chaos Terminator and slightly short of the Great Knight Terminator head. And in terms of weight, they're very similar. So, all right, very heavy figures. In the conclusion, you know, I must say that I was really happy to add this iconic character to my collection, but my excitement was sort of lifted. One of the crucial aspects of any action figure is its possibility. We collectors love to create dynamic and impressive poses that capture the essence of our favorite characters, right? But this figure falls short in this regard due to the design tricks, the movement of the arms. I find it almost impossible to achieve a natural and fluid poses. As I reveal the fixed shoulder pad, 
it becomes apparent that this design choice by Joy Toy is more than just a mistake. It appears to be a fundamental change. Perhaps Joy Toy aimed to prioritize aesthetic or stability over articulation. But to me, this decision ultimately hampers the figure's playability. While some collectors may appreciate the added stability or look, but for me, I value posing option as well. So this design feels like a missed opportunity. You know, we expect a certain level of playability that justify the price. You know, in case of this figure, the disappointing fixed shoulder pad design significantly diminishes the value for the money. Especially for me, I enjoy dynamic display, make it difficult to justify this purchase. You know, if the figure is roughly 25% cheaper, I will say, look, okay, that's fine. You know, I'll think the price justify that. But it, it is not, you know, I'm just not happy with it. So I will say, Jota has left me very disappointed, I should say. As an action figure enthusiast, I believe that Jota missed this opportunity to strike a balance between aesthetic and articulation. Considering the price of this figure, the design choice feels unjustified and I have a very high expectation on this figure. But now I have to, you know, shift my focus on the upcoming Chaplin Brother virus. So hopefully that figure will satisfy my um, expectation. So tell me what you think. You know, you may like it. Um, you may say, look, it's fine. You know, I, you know, I disagree with you, whatever. You know, feel free to say it. And this is the end of this video. I will talk to you next time. Bye for now.